first step of five is to bring up the Citrix environment um, that can be gotten to from any browser. I'm using Google Chrome here. Um, Got to copy and paste the URL from the PowerPoint slide. Step one of the PowerPoint slide. I'm going to copy it into the browser, hit enter, and it brings up this pop here. Um, now you have to log in. And then it will prompt you with these four machines to connect to. The two we're concerned with are AE Win 7, uh, Aerospace Engineering, and College of Engineering, COE Win 7. Um, A through L, click this one. If your last name is um, M through Z, you'll click this one. Um, my last name starts with an S, so I'll click here. I do save, and I do launch. Now keep in mind all this is assuming that you've done lesson zero and have installed all this before. And so now I'm just reconnecting. Now what comes up is the virtual screen. So this is my virtual desktop. Um, and I'm actually looking at my space that's on the server in the College of Engineering. Um, next up, we will bring up MATLAB and do some programming. Now that I have a Citrix, um, first thing I'm going to do is maximize this window so it'll take over my whole space. Now I'm going to bring up MATLAB. I go start, and then I've run MATLAB before, so I, I can pull it up. It's one of my most recently used. Or I could do all programs and then scroll down. Now there it is. There's a MATLAB icon there. Or if that doesn't show up, I get to go down to MATLAB, click that, and choose MATLAB R2011B. And when you click that, it takes a minute, but MATLAB will load. You have to keep in mind you're working in a virtual machine here, so it's not going to be as fast as a desktop, but that was relatively quick. And here's the MATLAB environment. Um, and so what we're going to do next is we're actually going to... Um, program a function, but before we do that, um, I know that you supposedly have done the video demo here, but let's talk about this environment. Um, you have several different spaces. Over here to the left, this pane allows you to keep track of what folder you're saving your files to. Uh, that's very important, and when we save and do our function here in a minute, uh, we're actually going to save it to this MATLAB uh, folder, which is built in and automatic, so it's the default folder, um, and that's very helpful. That's a good place to store all of your homework files so you don't get them lost. And you'll store them on a virtual machine, but they'll be available for you anytime that you need them. Um, in the middle here, we have the command window, which is going to be very important. Um, and then over here to the right, we have the workspace, which shows all of our variables and our variable uh, values um, as we make calculations. So that will help us keep track of where we are and what we're doing. We'll use that more and more, um, more advanced we get. And now here's the command history. Um, I've already done some work here, and so this shows past commands that I've typed in to the command window. Uh, there will be another window called the editor window uh, that we're going to bring up uh, when we get ready to do our function. Uh, but these are the basic windows here, and um, we'll move forward um, in the next segment. So now we're going to create our, our first function. It's going to be a simple function. We're just going to add two numbers. Um, um, but the way you do it is you go File, and you can do New. And then it asks you here what kind of new things you're going to do. Um, in this class and when you take this class uh, during the regular school year, uh, primarily you're going to be dealing with either scripts or functions. Uh, right now we'll do functions. I'll explain more about the difference between those two later, but right now we're going to do a function. Um, so I click on function. And what comes up, if you notice, is another window. And so uh, compared to what we had before, the current uh, folder window is still the same. Workspace window is the same over here. Command history is still the same over here. Uh, you notice that the command window is down lower and this new editor window has popped up in here. Um, 
it is helpful to note uh, because I've run MATLAB before, um, my window popped up in here automatically. What may have happened to you is what may have happened is you may have gotten this floating window. Um, and you notice the background here, everything is as it was when we started uh, MATLAB, and then this floating window happens. If you look at these arrows over here in the upper right hand corner, these allow you to dock and undock um, your windows. And so what I want to do is dock this window. Uh, that way I get this view, uh, which is very helpful in programming. Um, once you do it once, then as has happened to me, the default will be that it shows up this way all the time. You can undock all of these windows if you wish and have them floating all over the place, but it's very nice if you leave them uh, sort of where they are here. Okay, so now we're going to do a function. Because we selected, when we selected File, New, and we chose Function, if you notice, it has the template for how you to format your function. Uh, for those of you who've programmed before, this is a little different. Um, for those of you who've never programmed before, then, um, and then this is all new to you. Um, but the way you do it is the way you start a function is the first word on the first line of the file has to be function. If you notice, we have uh, some colored syntax here which allows it, so it makes the function, all the keywords, words that mean something to the MATLAB programming environment are actually blue. Um, so that's very helpful. Uh, the green here, um, these are comments, and so comments start with the percent sign and they turn green. They mean nothing to the computer. They're just notes for the humans, uh, for we humans to to, um, to look at to help us to figure out what we're going, what's going on and what we intended. Um, so the way that you do um, a function is you put the word function first. And then here, if you put your cursor over, you get some case sensitive um, uh, help, uh, or some location sensitive help. And so this is actually the return value. So this is the answer, what we want the function to return to the person who called the function in the first place. That, that variable name goes here. We'll talk about variable names later, but just for right now, uh, variable name goes here. The uh, name of the function goes here. And then uh, any arguments that the user is going to give us go here. And this is standard with all functions. So the reason I'm starting with this is that if you can understand this now, you'll be ahead of the game. Um, and so, and then you will end the function with the word end here. You notice that's blue and it's context sensitive. You also notice when I click on that, a line on this word end, a line shows under it, and a line also shows under function. That shows that this end is ending that function. It's putting brackets or um, bracing that whole function, wrapping it in one nice package. Um, so I'm just going to do a simple function here. Uh, this function is going to take in two numbers and return the sum of those two numbers to the caller. So my output argument is going to be a variable that I call sum. I could have named it just about anything, but um, I called it sum. The name of my function is going to be my sum. Um, and then my input variable is going to take in two numbers, a, comma, b. Now, if you're used to programming um, in other languages, uh, especially something like Java, uh, where you have to define the type of every variable, this is going to look a little strange to you because I did not define the types, but I don't need to in MATLAB, so, uh, so bear with it. Uh, this is a good place in here to put comments. Um, I put something like uh, this function adds, oops, this function uh, takes in two numbers. here, but I choose not to do that, so I'm going to highlight that and delete it. Now, the last thing, the way functions work is the last thing that I assign uh, the variable sum, the last value that I assign the variable sum is what's going to get returned to the caller. That may be confusing now, but over time that will make sense. So, very simply, the variable sum is going to get um, A plus B. And I'm going to put a semicolon here, and we'll talk about semicolons later. Um, 
to make all ones in this language mean a little something a little bit different than they do if you're used to programming in Java or C or C plus or C sharp or something like that. Um, so that's in my function. So I've written my function. Now, now I'm going to save it. So if I click save, um, it brings up this. Now this is very important, the location of where you save it. So if you notice this directory here is the same as this over here. So when I save this, this function is going to show up in this directory over here, and that's that's what I want. Um, it also has given the function a name, and you notice that name, the file name, is the same as the function name. So I call my function mysum, and the file that I save it in is going to save it as a .m file. Uh, the MATLAB uses .m files. Um, it's going to save it um, as the, the file name will be the same as the function name, and that is very key. So you don't have a freedom to name the file whatever you want. And so since that is very important, MATLAB already puts this value in. So all I have to do is hit save. And you notice when I did that, um, um, the function actually got saved. It, but does it actually work? How do I run it? So once I've saved it, then that function is available in the command window. And so if I call that function, which is my sum, and I say run the function my sum on the numbers, let's just say uh, 6 and 8, when I hit the enter key, the answer ANS equals 14. And that's what's supposed to happen. You also notice some things happened over here. Um, in terms of the workspace, the variable ANS got the value 14. And that's as we expected here. And then down here in the command history, I ran um, on uh, the 20th of June at 12.57 AM. Um, I ran the function mysum with the value 6 and 8. And so you can keep track. And I can actually use this to keep track of the functions that I've run or things that I've done in the command, history, in the command line, which are very helpful. But more on that um, later. Um, the important thing here is that we have written a function. Um, and that it works properly. And in the next segment, we're actually going to uh, go about turning that in uh, via T square. So now that we've actually uh, created and saved our function, now let's turn it in. Um, and I'm not going to be able to turn it completely, but I'll show you all the mechanics so you should be able to figure that figure it out. Um, I'm going to minimize my MATLAB. And I'm going to bring up my browser, and I'm going to point my browser to uh, T square. T -square. All of this may be new to you now, but it will become um, second nature in about a week. Um, I log in. TID password. If you haven't memorized those yet, um, you will know them in about a week. And then these should be all the tabs of all the classes that you're taking. These are uh, various classes that I'm either teaching or involved in in the summer. Uh, I click on mid 2012, and sometimes it does take a while for T squared to load. Uh, be patient. And then you would navigate to assignments. And this assignment is still in draft form, um, but I'm going to go ahead and click on it um, just so we can see what it looks like. Um, and then this one, um, when you get ready to turn something in, you just hit Add Attachments. And then you would upload a file. You would browse um, your, your drive space looking for the file. now. So. This was saved in a file called Downloads, not Downloads, uh, Documents, sorry, uh, MATLAB. And there's my file, My Sums. I click on that, and it would put it in there. There you go. And then um, if I didn't have any other files to download, uh, then I would type uh, Continue. I would hit Continue. And then it says My Attachment, My Sum is here. 
and I'm ready to submit. And then I would go about submitting my homework. I can't submit this right now because it's still in draft mode, but that's how you would do it. Um, so that's actually sort of the big picture on how you would start up um, the Citrix environment, start up MATLAB, write a function, save that function, and then, and then also run that function, and then turn it in. Um, and so hopefully this will help, um, and that you'll be able to pull off this assignment before um, Monday's class.